Welcome everyone to South Park Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are so glad you have chosen to join us today as we worship the Lord together and have fellowship. The house of God is such a special place to be. You may have heard people refer to a church congregation as the body of Christ. This is because the Bible explains each of us in, as individual members of one whole body. We hope that you will receive a rich blessing from your worship experience today. Youth Day, May 20th. You don't want to miss it. See you there.
evening and welcome to South Park's Wednesday online streaming prayer meeting. And we're so happy to have you here tonight. Uh, as I say all the time that prayer is the superpower of the church. We're so happy to have you here tonight. Uh, we're happy to have South Park, Maine here. We're happy to have East Birmingham Mission and North Birmingham Virtual and all the other saints from the other churches that are here. We're so thankful that you're here tonight and we are ready to pray and ask God to change us and ask God to use us to change the world. Now, before we get to prayer tonight, there is a word from the Lord. Uh, there is a word from the Lord, and that word tonight will come from Psalm chapter 51. What did I say? Psalm chapter 51, verse 7. Psalms 51, verse 7 will be where our emphasis on our word will be tonight. Psalms chapter 51, verse 7. As we always say, if you are able in your kitchen table, able in your living room, able even in your bedroom to stand in reverence and honor of the word of God, we ask you to do so. Psalms chapter 51, verse 7. Here is what the writer wrote in the word. It says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let's say that one more time. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here now. The Holy Spirit has been with us. If we are on this live stream, it was because the Holy Spirit inspired us to do it. So now, Holy Spirit, we ask that you will purify, cleanse, make holy, give us the ability to be in the presence of Jesus and the Father. Let this word be sanctified by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. You know, it's the, thanks the Thanksgiving season is approaching. One Thanksgiving, a surgeon was invited over to his friend's house for the dinner. The host deftly carved the turkey and said, I'd make a pretty good surgeon, wouldn't I? What do you think? The surgeon replied, anybody can take it apart. Let's see you put it back together again. Human beings are good at taking stuff apart. Stay with me now. I'm going somewhere. Our, sensual, our sinful nature is conducive to taking things apart. Humans are good at taking apart somebody's reputation. We are good at separating people from their money, virtually taking their finances apart. Uh, we are good at convincing people to act counter to their better selves, in effect, taking their moral compass apart. Uh, we, we, we have even created and, and, and twisted institutions to separate God from each other. We, we, we have separated sex and marriage from their intended purposes. Human beings are, are, are good at taking stuff apart. Uh, 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 uh. Some people say that, 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 that we are good at taking each other's countries apart and dividing people. Uh, we're good at taking stuff apart but human beings are not good at putting things back together. Uh, David, a man after God's own heart, separated Bathsheba 
from her husband and her marital commitment. He cried out to God. Once Nathan the prophet came to him and he said, purge me with his up and I shall be clean. Now, wash me and I'll be way white as snow. He desired that God would restore and would filter away the sin that separated him from God, that separated Bathsheba from God, David realized that he was good at taking stuff apart, but he needed God to put it back together. See, one of the problems of human beings is, is that is that we recognize how good we are at taking stuff apart, but we are oftentimes too prideful to recognize that even though I could take it apart, I can't put it back together. Uh, 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 see, when a human being takes a life, you separated that person from their life, but you can't give life. You can't put it back together. Uh, and, and so David prayed this prayer, uh, and, and you find the story about this prayer in Second Samuel chapter 12 verses 1 through 14. You ought to go back and read the context of this prayer that David prayed that God would put things back together where he had taken it apart. As David began to meditate on the law of God, he felt great remorse and, and truly he repented, repented of his, of his sin. sin. He wanted, he wanted to, to restore his relationship, his relationship with God. He, he understood, uh, he had an understanding that this thing called hyssop had healing properties and, and that it was a purifier. And this hyssop, this, this plant, this, this, this material well, uh, was the basis of this prayer and this line in Psalms 51. And if you'll just give me a minute to let me break down what hyssop means and to break down how hyssop is representative of the Holy Spirit working in our life, we'll find this Wednesday evening that when we are, that, that when we come together with the Holy Spirit of God, he will apply the spirit to our lives. You see, hyssop, this plant, this material is representative of the spirit of God. He said, purge me with hyssop. What he meant was, was purge me with the Holy Spirit. If you just give me a minute, let me break this down. The word, Hebrew word for hyssop is esop. It means holy herb. Uh, hyssop is considered to be spiritually purifying and serves as an aid in cleansing oneself from sin and immorality and evil thoughts and bad habits. And, and watch me now. The, the, the method of using hyssop oil inhaled or to the body, our body was used to purge oneself, oneself from, from iniquity. iniquity. Uh, I really believe that, that it has a scientific basis. Hyssop has con constituents that can reprogram the DNA where sinful tendencies, i.e. negative emotions, are stored, thus releasing and cleansing uh, the root cause of the action. Let me give an example. At the first Passover, the death angel killed the firstborn of every household except those that had the doorway marked with the lamb's blood. But the lamb's blood was applied with a hyssop branch. Here's what the Bible says. He says, ye shall take a branch of his up and dip it in blood and, and that is in the basin and strike the lintel on the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. Striking the blood post would have released the scent of the hyssop and the oil. I need you to understand that animal's blood smelled. It stunk. So when you dip the hyssop, which is a sweet smelling herb, into the blood and put it on the side of the post you didn't smell the blood you smelled the hyssop you see when Jesus saves us from our sins our sins stink to holy heaven but when the spirit of God is applied to our lives uh, Jesus doesn't smell our sins he smells his spirit on us Jesus Yeshua 
the bride of Christ, the bride, the, the, the bride, the Jesus, the, the husband of the bride, rather, became the Passover lamb. The Bible says, now there was set a vessel full of vinegar. They filled a, a sponge with vinegar and put it on his side and put it to Christ's mouth. Let me explain it. He, he, they dipped the sponge in sour wine and, and vinegar and extended it in his mouth on a branch of hyssop because Jesus was the door to salvation. This prophetic charade betrayed his blood as the only way to salvation and hyssop, which is symbolic of the Holy Spirit as the only one who can sanctify the blood to be applied to sin. The symbolism is representative of the fact that the spirit must be applied to whatever we do in order to have effectiveness. Y'all didn't hear me. I ain't listening to me. Here's up is representative of the spirit. Here's what you need to understand. The spirit must be applied to everything we do in order to be effective. You see, the word without the spirit is legalism. The blood without the spirit is justification by works. A Christian song without the spirit is just a melody. A uh, modesty without the spirit is pretense. Uh, a meal without the spirit uh, uh, is not hospitality. It's just breakfast. Uh, a gift without the spirit uh, is just a bribe. Uh, a marriage without the spirit uh, is just a contract. Uh, if you don't have the spirit, uh, uh, it doesn't have it any power. A sermon without the spirit uh, is just a speech. Uh, what you get to understand that whatever you do, uh, whatever it is that you say you do for the Lord if the Holy Ghost is not activating you to do it uh, and giving you power to do it, uh, I don't care what you think it accomplishes. Heaven don't recognize what the spirit don't bless. So Hyssop, hyssop is representative of the Holy Ghost, of the Spirit. You see, the church must always operate motivated by the Spirit and empowered by the Spirit. Did you hear what I said? We got to always, 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 and whatever the church does, be motivated by the Spirit and be activated by the Spirit. The Spirit must cause you to do it and the Spirit must do it in you. Let me say it again. You, the, the, the Spirit must, must make you want to do it. And the Spirit then has to give you the power to do it. The Bible says he will, wo he will work in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The hyssop means that the Spirit is in it. What David wanted is this. David wanted his confession to God to be real. He wanted his confession to God to be authentic. He wanted it. He wanted his cleansing. He wanted his forgiveness to be washed, to be purified by the Holy Ghost. Why does God give us the spirit? Why does he ask us to move through the spirit and by the spirit? The, and here's the second point I want to make. The spirit's work is to filter human behavior. The spirit's work is to filter human behavior. Let me do a little bit more teaching. I got a few more minutes. Can I take my time a little bit tonight? I mean, filter through this just a little bit more. The Spirit's work is to filter human behavior. Uh, uh, Valerie uh, Cooksley, uh, an RN, wrote in her book, Aromatherapy, the uses of hyssop, and this is what hyssop is used for, uh, the physical hyssop, it is used as an anti-inflammatory, it's, it's used as an antioxidant, it's, it's used as an anti-parasitic, uh, it's used as an antiseptic and an antiviral. Hyssop is good for easing colds and, and coughs and, and fever as a discongestant. It, it helps reduce fat in tissue and it raises, it, it helps lower blood pressure, it opens the respiratory system, it strengthens 
and tones the nervous system. Uh, hyssop serves as a sedative and is good for quieting anxiety and clearing the mind. Hyssop is an antibacterial, anti uh, uh, collaboratory fragility, uh, anti inflammatory, and can help uh, with about 81 different medical conditions, including cancer, bronchitis, insomnia, edema, and colds. As a cleansing and a medic medicinal agent, it has clear allegorical meaning in scripture. In other words, hyssop has physical properties and it has it has spiritual properties that match its physical properties. Uh, 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 hyssop uh, uh, was a weed that grew practically everywhere around Palestine. The blood is applied by common faith in the word of God. Uh, you see, just as hyssop was all around Palestine, uh, uh, the spirit uh, is all around us. Uh, and if we apply the spirit uh, like, the, like the Jerusalem people used hyssop, uh, 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 well, faith in God will grow just like hyssop can have healing properties. Uh, in, in many of the Old Testament sacrifices, uh, 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 hyssop was burned in the fire with the sacrifice along with the scarlet and the cedar. Uh, Numbers 19, 6, uh, it says, and the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it in the midst of the burning of the heifer. In other words, uh, the animal smelled, uh, the animal's blood smelled, uh, and the fire smelled, but the sweet smelling aroma of the hyssop took all of the negative smell and it neutralized it. When Jesus uh, saves us from our sins, our sins are messy, our sins smell, our sins are disgusting, but the Holy Spirit takes that situation and he purifies it and he cleans it. Uh, 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 you see, the reference to hyssop in John chapter 9, 29 ties together the Old Testament of the red heifer uh, there on Golgotha, the hyssop, the blood sacrifice, Emmanuel, all work together. The hyssop, the animal, and the stone work together. So guess what? So guess what? Jesus was a sacrifice. Golgotha was the stone. His blood was the scarlet and the Holy Spirit was the hyssop. The Holy Spirit is a co-equal partner in our salvation. We do partner with and cooperate with the Spirit, but it's not like tires on a car working to stabilize the ride. The Holy Spirit works like an oil filter. He allows us to minister in order for our ministry to be acceptable. The Holy Spirit must filter our sinful humanity. I'm almost done, but y'all got to get this. The Holy Spirit works like an oil filter. Because what, you don't, what we don't understand is, is despite our best efforts, all of our service is mixed with our humanity. Every prayer we pray, every sermon we preach, every teaching we do, every door we knock on, every dollar we give, every piece of service that we give to the Lord is mixed with our humanity. You see, God, Gideon, saved Israel. But the spirit had to filter through, through, through his indecisiveness. God filtered Moses' anger. God filtered through Peter's impulsiveness. John the Baptist's self-righteousness. God filtered through David and Solomon's lust. God filters through our mess so that when we witness to other people, they don't see the mess. They see the spirit of God working through us. The Jesus filters our humanity in order so that people can see the power of the spirit to change our lives. You see, hyssop is a perennial herb. It is one of the best herbs. It is one of the chief herbs. You see, Christ, the Bible says, was the first begotten son. 
Does that mean it, it, it means that it's, he is the unique son. He is the monogenes. He is the, the one and only. He is the one that is able to effectually complete the salvific process. You see, Jesus, knowing that all things were accomplished, that the scripture might be filled, he said, I thirst. And there had been placed a, ve a vessel full of vinegar and filled with a sponge. And he put it on his side and put it to his mouth. And when Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. This account has greater meaning that Jesus was than Jesus simply being thirsty and being vinegar, given vinegar to drink. The scene relates to Jesus' thirst to save the human race. Let me say that again. When Jesus said, I thirst, it was just not for vinegar. It was just not for liquid. Jesus was thirsty to save the human race. This, this, this vinegar relates to the mixture of false and true beliefs that exist within the church. So let me say that again. This vinegar, this, this mixture relates to true doctrine and false doctrine that's, on, that's in the church today. This meaning of vinegar is based on wine and it's used in the Holy Supper, meaning divine truth, uh, which is the blood of Jesus Vinegar is the sour form of the wine, which causes it to take on the meaning of truth mixed with falsehood. And expanding a bit on this interpretation, the hyssop in this passage represents a cleaning of the mixed truth of the false and the truth in the church today. So Jesus tasted the vinegar. It was a, it was a mix of the truth and it was a mix of the false. But when it was mixed with hyssop, what it represented was that Jesus was taking out the false and he left the truth. And so Jesus, on the cross, with the hyssop, what he did was he filtered, he filtered through human action. He filtered our humanity. Hyssop is representative of the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit that brings efficacy and life to what we do. Why? Because the Spirit filters through our human actions. The Spirit makes everything that we do acceptable to God. And in the last days, there'll be two churches. Both churches will be holding services. Both churches will be feeding people. Both churches will be baptizing folks. Both churches will be teaching. Both churches will be handing out clothes. Both churches will be doing education programs. But one church will be filtered by the Spirit. And the other church will be operating in the flesh. One church will be lifting up Christ and the other church will be lifting up themselves. One church will be saved and the other church will be lost. And the difference is not in the size of the church. The it's not in the doctrine of the church. The difference is not in the work of the church. The difference is not in the efficacy of the church's ministry. The difference is that the spirit filters one and the spirit discounts the other. And so tonight, my simple appeal to you is this. You want God to accept that which you offer to him then ask his spirit to cleanse it ask his spirit to touch it ask that you not be able to do anything unless the spirit is in it Lord we thank you so much your Holy Spirit is here now This Holy Spirit is on this live stream. Your spirit will pray with us this evening. We ask for a special dispensation of it. 
Lord, you breathe on the disciple. You said, receive the Holy Spirit. And then the first dispensation of the Spirit fell on your people. It was that dispensation of the Spirit that gave them the power to turn upside down the then known world. We are now, Lord, between the first dispensation of the Spirit and the soon and coming latter rain. We are in between those disciplines. We are we're in between those spirits. We are in between the, the falling of those spirits, of the Holy Spirit, I rather. We ask that you would prepare our hearts, that we ask that the work of reformation, the work of reform, the work of revival, the work of transformation will be complete in us that the latter rain may fall on us as the former rain fell on your disciples. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.